Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this afternoon webinar. I see a lot of people are expecting Mr. Jens to come and, uh, and join us. Allow me to introduce myself for those who watch us for first time, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Theo. I work here at Admirals. Uh, as a, an analyst and educator, and I'm here to introduce you to Mr. Jens. He will join us shortly, so he can take over, and you can go through the major event of the non-fund payrolls. Can you please let me know on the chat box below if you, uh, if anyone is trading around the non-fund payrolls, or if you want to say something. So just to make sure, we all know when uh, we are informed about the weekly trading podcast we do here at Admirals, ladies and gents, please, on, uh, on a weekly basis, commit yourself with just for five minutes to listen to the podcast. Let me show you where you can find them here in our website. You can go to admiralmarkets.com. You can come here, analytics, weekly trading podcast. And here is the link for you. You can scroll down and um, you can scroll down and just download it uh, from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, and you know, you know much better from where you prefer to hear and listen to your podcast. Now, for those who join us for first time, I would definitely like to take one second and just uh, show you the website so you know our YouTube channel. Sorry, not the website, the YouTube channel, what I'm saying. <laughs> so here is the YouTube channel, Admirals Global. We will appreciate if you follow and like the videos we post. Jens, uh, all Jens, all Jens webinar are here at the Trading Spotlight. Also, I do Monday to Friday live trading sessions for 30 minutes. Please make sure you subscribe so you can uh, get live updates about the markets. And if some trades, they come around at that time, we just take them. Now, uh, I would just like to know that you are aware about the Admirals mobile application. You can download it and you can use it like any other application. You can initiate trades, especially uh, for those who are investing here with us. It's a, it's the most simple and the easiest uh, tool to use. It's much, much easier to use it than the MetaTrader. In trading, we use the MT5, but when it comes to investing, really, it's a, it's a no-brainer, in my opinion. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just make sure you know about our Instagram page. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, please make sure you do. And here is the Instagram page, uh, Admirals Global. Let me share the link. We post many, let me find the chat. Here we put a lot of content. Uh, you can get informed about reels, uh, in terms, very informative, to be honest. All right, we have some funny moments here on TikTok. And uh, also we put many uh, valuable content for traders and investors. So. How is how is trading going, guys? Can you please let me know if you currently on any trades? If you are uh, holding, if you trade it uh, around uh, non-farm payrolls, just if you kindly let me know uh, what's how is your trading going until uh, Jens will join us. He's joining us shortly. Any volunteer? Any brave enough to just say? I'm trading, I'm not trading. 
really. I'm I, I'm super curious to to read some messages now. Oh, Mr. Jens, hello, 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 and uh, welcome to your webinar. <laughs> So hello, yes, yeah, I am. <laughs> so how is uh, how is how is going so far? Non-farm payrolls came out. Markets they are going crazy. <laughs> um, I think I think it's um, um interesting to see how how markets react right now. Um, yeah. given what we've heard from from the Fed on uh, Wednesday, so I think there was uh, plenty of reasons to be kind of let's say skeptical. Um, with the rhetoric yeah. being used from from Powell. Um, yeah. And numbers were now better than expected, but market is not selling off, which is, yes. I think, not such a good bad sign. In fact, um, yeah, because, yeah, um, it means strong U.S. dollar, right? Uh, yeah, but also in addition to to the the pattern we've seen over the course of let's say the yeah. last months, um, it was clear. Sometimes it was like um, the Fed comes out more restrictive than expected, and we are selling off. Uh, yeah. um, U.S. Uh, um, inflation comes out hotter than expected, we are selling off, and then there was a follow through the next next day. So this time uh, we have. Have a restrictive rhetoric we're selling off and then we're yeah. not selling off further and then i think yeah. this is not that's not so bad sign to be honest yeah yeah okay so uh please make sure jens you can share your screen and then uh i will mute my microphone yes so okay perfect ladies and gents enjoy your valuable webinar thank you so much so yeah, thanks thanks for having me today. Um, we want to have a look at the non-farm payrolls which were just released, and I in fact said now um, lots of what I what I plan to to um, show to you in the upcoming minutes um, in regards to my personal um, opinion, let's say of the um, of the of the trade uh, of the trade of the event itself and and how markets reacted. And um, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, go through why is this of importance? We then put it in perspective of why it's of importance, especially right now. And then I also like to guide you here through some of the um, hotter markets, let's call them, um, based on these uh, news now, which I consider to be US equities, in this case, um, S&P 500, gold, but also in addition to that, probably dollar JPY and uh, what I think is the most likely reaction um, to this to this news event. Um, I oh by the way I just forgot I think the no it's perfect it's perfect it's the it's the right um, um, way to, to to put this so um, it's very important I think to keep in mind that uh, this is purely um, educational content I provide to you right now so it could be that we um, will make a trade or that I um, formulate a trading setup um, I'm here and, and and show you how I trade these thoughts I present to you but please make sure that you just that you don't just duplicate um, the trades and, and I think, well, if Jens says so, then it will work out. I can't guarantee anything. Um, so any, any risks you're taking, you're fully responsible for the trades. You can keep all the money you make if you make money, but uh, this is the same, which is also true for, for potential losses. And uh, so please um, um, understand everything I present to you right now in the upcoming minutes here as uh, purely educational. Um, and uh, so I, I don't think I, I really need to, to um, say a lot more, a lot more about um, Admirals as a broker. I think uh, Theo already made, made a beautiful introduction and, and, and um, told you why it's worth to visit admiralmarkets.com for further details on uh, trading related um, um, stuff, let's say, and then why um, Admirals as a broker is um, of, of true value, especially for active traders. Um, we want to, in fact, jump right into uh, the action here. And in this context, um, have a look, first of all, why employment numbers are of importance. Um, and um, also put this here in context then to the most recent FAT decision, uh, which we saw last Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> so last Wednesday. Um, so um, we, we want to keep it as simple as possible, in fact. So I don't want to dig into um, um, some, some um, academic uh, descriptions or something like that. Um, but I want to give you uh, just a rough overview and what employment situation is, respectively, why this is of importance, um, how the 
thinking um, a process behind this works and then take it from there. So first of all, um, why are employment numbers in general of interest? That this is not just true for the US, even though um, the non-farm payrolls, which are usually released at the first Friday of each month, are um, the most anticipated and sometimes resulting in the most volatile, sometimes most brutal um, 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 moves in the market. Why are they of, of, of high importance and, and why are they of interest? Well, because um, the easy saying is that if the confidence in the economy, respectively, in politics is good, well, what usually happens is that um, companies, um, factories, usually increase um, their, their um, workload, let's say, or their, their orders. And um, as a result, out of um, increasing industrial production, especially, so we are really um, I'm looking here at the manufacturing um, 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 aspects. One, one second, I just have to, to look something up. Okay, um, so um, if or well, once um, you see increasing industrial production, usually what you will see is that companies will meet the higher demand here for their goods through more investments. And um, what does this mean? Well, it's not just that you um, buy more, let's say, um, 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 stuff which will produce the goods you're selling, um, but you also need someone to work with these um, uh, um, uh, machines in this case, so when, once we're talking about the manufacturing sector. And um, so the result out of this is you hire more workers. Same could be true. So we are working here in, with, with the manufacturing sector. We could also talk about non-manufacturing, like uh, services, especially in the IT business, for example. So once you have, um, um, for example, companies who run something in, in, in regards to manufacturing, they still want to make sure that people know about their product. So what you usually um, see then is that um, they increase their advertisement um, marketing expenses, and therefore you need companies, for example, who hire people who code um, um, ads on their website, simply, simply speaking. Um, so long thing short, uh, you, you usually see uh, a natural results of more workers being needed, more service people being needed um, once the economy outlook is positive. So what you will then naturally see is that um, to hire the best people, what you will naturally see is that, that you have to hire the best guys. And how do you do that? And um, um, in form of paying them the most attractive salary. So uh, you compensate them accordingly to their work, respectively to the quality of their work, which means then that usually what you will see in this context is that you will have an increase in um, the average hourly wages. And as a result out of this, more people will naturally have a higher income which means that you see an increase in consumption because if people look um, um, bright in the, into a bright future and have money, well, they usually spend more money, which is then um, resulting in a reinforcing um, cycle in this case um, because there is a higher demand which needs to be fulfilled with more production of whatever good. And then um, we have a reinforcement, which means you have um, um, to, to meet this higher demand by hiring more people. To hire the best people, you have to pay more money and you get kind of an inflation, which, which picks up. So the economic growth and rising inflation you usually um, face then results in a central bank being motivated to raise interest rates here to avoid overheating uh, the economy in this case. Um, and usually vice versa. So right now you can already see um, this leads to inflation and a focus on inflation in this context. So the question here is in fact, um, okay, so the question here is in fact, um, do we have economic growth right now, um, 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 strong economic growth? I'd say, well, this is not the case, but we certainly have um, right now rising inflation, which is um, bringing the um, Fed in this context into a very difficult um, environment because right now they are hiking, and we are talking about the US Central Bank, they are hiking aggressively rates, okay? But um, while hiking aggressively rates, um, they make money because um, um, interest rates or yield is the price for money in this case. Um, you make it more expensive, which means especially growth companies here can hire 
people um, right now because they are missing liquidity. They're missing money, cheap liquidity, which we've seen now over um, uh, the, the course of the last 10 years, flooding the markets. Um, missing so which means that overall the employment situation worsens to some extent or you expect it to worsen while on the other hand you fight inflation and try to bring inflation down so long thing short what we um what we what we right now face is some um a very difficult situation in which the, the fed finds itself so the thing is now that we could see, or what, what, what we would expect is, in fact, if numbers, employment numbers come in better than expected, then the Fed has more room to hike rates in the future and fight inflation. While if numbers don't come in as expected or below expectation or the fine print, let's say, points that we have a very solid job number, as we will see for today, for example, but in the, in the fine print, you will see that it's not um, um, good salary paying jobs, um, which we, which we um, um, see um, um, increasing here, but it's part-time jobs especially. Then um, the, the Fed has probably lesser room to be more restrictive in their monetary policy. Um, and now I have here the next slide. I have the so-called Fed watch tool. Um, which gives you an overview of um, what market participants here in the futures market, especially, expect in terms of um, uh, the, 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 the yield levels to be in the future, in this case, at a certain point in the future. Um, and there's a website to this, by the way. Let me just um, open one second. Let me just open here. So this is, by the way, uh, the, the the tweeted uh, jobs report. We will go into through um, into this in a few seconds. So first of all, I'm um, here. I'd like to to share with you the Fed Watch tool. Okay, it's called Fed Watch tool. And as you will see, once you open here this website, you can you can click here through, for example, 14th of December. And then you have two columns. And the question is now, what does this mean? Well, it means that here, the current target rate, so after Wednesday, um, is 375, 400. Um, and it means that here in December, the next Fed meeting, which takes place on the 14th of December, that there is a likelihood of right now 52% that the next target rate then will be 425 to 450 and 50% that it will be 450 to 475, which means here you see an expectation of 52% in this case, to be um, um, accurate, that market participants expect the Fed to hike at her December meeting by another 50 basis points, and 48% that they will hike another 75 basis points. So, you can now go into the future, and this is exactly what we want to do, um, because this hasn't dram dramatically changed here um, since Wednesday. Um, it's in fact, it's it's the same. So it's it's um, it's it's very similar. But what has changed is what market participants expect for the next six months. So you can see, you can really uh, nicely look into the future and what the um, futures markets are, are expecting in terms of the Fed policy right now. And what you've seen um, happening here on uh, Wednesday was that these columns on the right started to dramatically increase. What, what does it mean? Well, when you looked at this Fed watch tool um, before the Fed rate decision last Wednesday, um, you saw that market participants here were expecting the, the market to, in fact, put this in quotation marks, but top out um, at 475 to 500 basis points so that there's no further room for further rate hikes um, in this first second uh, in the first half of the year 2023. Um, in fact, so um, we we now see these columns rising. And by the way, that this is true, you can see that here when looking at what was um, 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 accurate or what, what was the market expecting one week ago. So on the 28th of October, last week on Friday, you can see here that um, there was an increased probability. You can see here, there's 35% um, with 500 to 525 and 525 to 550, but um, more than 50% of market participants. And this is what I mean by saying it topped out there. Um, they saw 
um, the Fed to stop in the middle of uh, 2023 here at 475, 500 basis points, not go any further in terms of further rate, rate hikes. And now we can see here that this probability obviously increased to some extent dramatically. So you can now see that we are at 525, 550 um, with over 40%, nearly 50%, um, because you have to add up all those um, who are more on the right here, if, if they are um, seeing the Fed rates um, um, to be at 550, 575, they certainly see it at 525, 550. So that's included here in this expectation. So that being said, um, you can see that something changed there. So there was a clear shift. And that was, by the way, the reason why equity sold off quite sharply. And what happened here? Well, what happened was that Jay Powell used a very restrictive language in his statement. You can see here, you can see there um, um, in the Financial Times in this case, I just um, Googled Powell, um, what did he say? Uh, higher, I think I, I just Googled Powell and, and higher. And that, that's it. Uh, that brought, what brought me here, this article. Jay Powell warns US rates will peak at higher level than expected. So expectation, some of you will read this headline and say, hey, what, what, exa what exactly is meant with expectation. So what is the market expecting? Where can I find this? Well, you can find it here. So this is in fact the source, which also journalists look for respectively, um, 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 in this case, monetary policy um, officials look at here. So what's the market expecting in fact? And the market was expecting, we top out in the first half of, of um, um, 2023. So in June, um, we will have a rates um, um, between 475 to 500. And if Powell now comes out and says, well, it peaks higher than you expect, well, it makes, it makes, makes, makes sense then to, uh, to see here these columns to rise. And now you can understand, well, certainly you, you will understand that um, higher rates in this case are toxic for equity prices because they are, they're ballooned to some extent. And, and many companies, even if they were unprofitable, um, made lots of money where the outlook was quite prosperous, let's say, for the future, given their, their overall, um, 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 or not given profitability, in fact, but they, they could easily survive because of the cheap liquidity. Now the cheap liquidity is um, taken away from them, and thus markets are under pressure. Since they had such a big impact, for example, on equities like the S&P, NASDAQ, and so on and so forth, you can see a downside acceleration in equity prices, then especially if the cheap money is pulled away from them. So, so having that in mind now um, brings us to the non-farm payrolls because the non-farm payrolls today, they were expected here. So you can find these um, data. First of all, you can find this data at admiralmarkets.com. Um, um, so there is a so-called Forex calendar. You can find it here uh, via analytics and then Forex calendar. And then you can also filter it. As you can see here, so I have plenty of, of um, nearly every um, source within it um, and country within it. And now what I, um, what I can do is I can filter it by impact, check the box here at the United States, apply filter, then for the day. And then you can see there's not that many big events, but non from payrolls is among these. And then you can see 261 um, against a forecast of 200,000. I pulled this up also here um, on trading economics. This is a second um, source I, I um, look the data up because there I have also the history here and I can also see the revision respectively in addition to that also some subcomponents of this um, um, news release here. One sec please. Okay I I have someone here saying he doesn't see anything. Um, if that was an issue, <laughs> um, I could imagine that um, people have uh, um, would have uh, um, let me know already in the chat box earlier. Um, so probably this is a local issue uh, at your end. I, I could imagine that um, that everyone else can see the screen quite uh, nicely right now. Could, could you just let me know in the, in the chat box? That would be uh, much appreciated, in fact. Yes, no. Just uh, type in a yes or a no uh, in the in the chat box, please, um, so that I that I that I know that you can see um, uh, the screen. I'd be surprised if you if you don't see it, to be honest. But um, yes, so yes, you can see it. Um, okay, so I think then this is a local issue um, in your case. Coming back to the non-farm payrolls. Um, so 
you can see here stronger than expected 261 um so better than expected and now you might say okay wait wait so they have better than expected news um which coming back to our thesis or respectively our our theory we just went through at the beginning um I said, well, if numbers are better than expected, this underlines the restrictive monetary policy approach from the Fed. So then usually you expect equities to perform bearish on these news, right? Yes, that makes perfect sense. It's very important to, by the way, uh, to, to really um, 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 look at this that way and, and really understand what happens. If this happens, then I expect this and that. If this happens, then this and that. And they're very important to, to work with such an if-then statement in case um, of, of markets or game planning in general, um, because this is um, what helps us to formulate a thesis. And uh, what, in fact, we put this in quotation marks, but, what, but we want to see what we want to see after we um, um, open a trade. And once this character changes then to um, draw conclusions out of that, most likely, for example, um, take out the position, for example. Um, and, and this is definitely something to, 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 to have in mind here. Um, so coming in now um, at 261, that seems quite solid, in fact, above expectation. So now um, you can see here, unemployment rate was higher than expected, 3.7. That's not so good, to be honest, um, because it was expected to come in at 3.6, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just open that here. Consensus, yeah, consensus was uh, 3.6, but it was as, at least definitely higher than, than before. Average hourly earnings um, slightly increased. Previous was 0.3, now it's 0.4. Also something which is positive. So average hourly earnings 0.4 means that month on month it increased by um, 0.4 on average here. And um, so to make long thing short, it looks solid. So you usually expect in such an in scenario, you really expect the market to probably drop again, especially after such a rhetoric being used. But the fine print is difficult, let's say. The fine print here, this is a chart I, um, I pulled up from uh, Zero Hedge. He tweeted this several minutes ago. Um, Zero Hedge here shows the job changes March to October um, so he looks at a quite extended period of six months here. And then what he does is he looks, it's not one um, um, a month he looks at, but the development over the last six months. What you can see here is um, the non farm payrolls report. Um, and you can see you have full-time jobs, which has minus 490,000 given the employment report. You can pull uh, the official numbers up from BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics in this case. Part-time jobs were higher, 492,000, and multiple job holders, 126. Is this what you expect to see in a strong economy? So that's a, that's a, a serious question. Um, my answer to this is no, not really. I want to see people having a full-time job, which pays a good salary, and then giving them the possibility to finance the life of their families, their personal lifestyle, if they're singles, if they don't have kids, um, to, 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 to able to consume in this case, which will help the economy grow to some extent. If you see here that full-time jobs are cut by 500,000 while part-time jobs increase, that means that you have lots of people working right now. It looks strong at first glance, but um, the, the job market is not strong at all. Um, in, in, in fact, here there's multiple job holders, people um, who not just have one job, but two, probably three jobs to, uh, um, to feed their families. So this is something you don't see in a strong economy, um, which is built on solid ground, let's say, at least not in my world. So probably I'm completely wrong on that. Um, but hiking in such an environment is probably or aggressively hiking, continue to aggressively hike into such an environment to combat inflation is probably just too much. So that being said, um, let's us come to the conclusion, okay, how, how can we trade this now? What can we do out of this in our um, 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 outlook for the market? And now we jump here into um, um, the, the chart. And what we have here, by the way, let me just check. Wow, I have I have um, Twilio here on my on my chart, and it's unbelievably weak. In fact, um, so overall, we will see. Um, I, I made this a topic because um, uh, I have I have um, 
uh, and overall now a bullish um, a BS, let's say. Uh, and, and so you expect markets to more likely to rise in the current environment. Just look at the DAX, we will see that in a few seconds. But also when we look at the S&P, let me, let me just check. So here I have the NASDAQ um, S&P about to, to push to 3,800. This is not enough in my case, um, but overall market is very strong right now. Um, and so as of now, Twilio, can't find a bit here. So that's most likely due to the very, very weak guidance they gave yesterday in their earnings. Um, but coming back to the current situation and playing this from a market perspective, not in the um, uh, single, single, single stock market, let's put it that way. Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to have a look here at equities. So what you can see, this is in fact uh, the, the NASDAQ 100, the, the NQ 100, on an hourly chart. So what you can see, let's probably go back. This is an hourly chart. Let's go to the five minute chart. You see an immediate flush on the downside. And then now we are pushing higher, ripping higher. We are flushing again. And now we are pushing higher again without penetrating the lows we made on the first initial flush lower. This is very strong. And I, I tell you why, because um, the job report itself, so we already gave a reason why the market is reacting positively, because all in all, the job report is not that strong, in fact. So the job report is, in fact, quite weak if you look at the fine print. But given the fact that we are um, I'm here in, in an environment, if you look at the daily chart, which is clearly bearish since the beginning of the year, once we saw, okay, there's a cool down in, uh, in the economy, um, you can see that by looking at yields. So usually you say you look at two-year yields and then you look at 10-year yields and there's inversion you can, you can spot. What does inversion mean? That means that two-year yields, uh, so shorter um, 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 yields paying higher interest or um, um, T notes in this case pay higher interest right, than longer term um, 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 yields. And why is this inversion? Why can you see that? Well, because it means that market participants expect the Fed to hike aggressively short term, which is clear given the current inflation environment and the pickup in inflation. So they, they aggressively hike um, and this affects short term rates. But longer term, uh, market participants expect the economy to cool down or at least not to gain further momentum on the upside which means that this cool down effect then results in yields on the, in the, at the lower end of the uh, yield curve to drop, which means you get high yields short term and lower yields longer term because of the expected cool down economy, which um, means nothing more than that market is expecting a cool down of the economy. So a recession, in fact. Um, and this is exactly what you get to see. So you see the Fed hiking aggressively. Um, and there was a very loose monetary policy stance following uh, the COVID pandemic. You probably remember that. Um, markets here in this case of the, of the um, NASDAQ 100 nearly doubled. There were um, shares which tripled tenfold um, within um, um, nearly one and a half year, one year, one and a half year, given um, this, this monetary policy um, um, stance given from the Fed, not just the Fed, there was also ECB, BOE, uh, BOJ, SMB, and so on and so forth. But, um, and then you have this, this, this aggressive um, um, restrictive monetary policy approach. And in this context then, um, yeah, the market is selling off. So you find ourselves in a corrective move. And now the market is really expecting uh, to the Fed to go all in, let's say, uh, all in in case of um, to really hike aggressively to get inflation under control and down. That being said, um, there's now a point when you say, okay, most of this is now priced in. Um, and, and this is exactly in which um, um, environment we find ourselves in. So the market has already corrected significantly. So I think this is one of the weakest starts um, or weakest years in uh, the history of equity markets and stock markets in this case, when looking at the NASDAQ 100, but also when looking at the S&P 500, for example. And uh, so the market is then discounting here, um, um, is, is, is a discounting mechanism that's probably something you heard about. So we are projecting our expectation for um, uh, the future here um, and see this in the market. So what we get to see here is not what the market is expecting. Um, 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 uh, where, what we see in the chart is not what the market expects to happen today, but what, hap what it 
expect the market to happen in the, let's say, upcoming 12 months. Um, and if you have now most of this restrictive monetary policy stance being priced in, and then the data is not confirming this restrictive policy approach anymore, as it did today with the, let's say, at first glance, strong employment numbers. But then if you look deeper and go into the details, you see they are not as strong as it indicates at first glance. Well, this is then the start that you see the so-called sell the rumors by the news event. And this is exactly what just happened, or what is about to happen, let's say. So we need the final confirmation. So that being said, then let us go over here, head over to the S&P 500. That brings us to um, my, my um, um, scenario sheet here in this case, which I prepared there. So the scenario I, I write down. So usually I have to game plan then for the upcoming week, respect of the upcoming days um, for these macro plays. I have here um, 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 scenarios, what will happen, numbers come out higher than expected, as expected, below expectation, and then I um, formulate a thesis. And as you can see here, so NFPs come in above expectation, which means 200,000 was expected. So now it's um, 260, it's 261. It's a, it, within this range, I, I um, 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 point out here, 250 to 280. Unemployment rate greater 3.5, so greater than it was previously, 3.7 in fact. Likelihood 60%. Um, so there was also other scenarios, but we focus here on this um, um, scenario where numbers come in um, as, as um, they came out, in fact. And um, so... You can see here now, I have S&P 500 gold and dollar JPY, and then I formulate um, what I want to see, what I need to see to feel confident. So, so in this case, I write to turn the tide to bullish after what we've seen following the Fed, I want to see S&P 500 holding above 3810. If this happens, if we capable probably closing the week above that level, well, then I'm willing to, to, to play the S&P 500 from the long side. Given that means um, we have still some room to go, even though the, the reaction is very similar. Um, but the question you might probably have is, in fact, why 3810? So why this, and it's not green anymore, but let's probably make this purple. Why why 3810? Why, why is this of interest that level? Because it's not clearly visible. Right now, you look at the chart and you say, okay, he says 3810, why not 3800? Why not 3820? Why 3810? The reason for that is because let's probably go down here to a 30 minute chart. It's probably a good way to put it. So you can see here, it seems to have something to do with um, what, what we've seen in these candles. And what are these candles? These are the FOMC candles, in fact. So Let's just zoom in a little. You can see the immediate push higher that was on the um, on the on the um, release. Yes, seventy five basis point rate hike, but only fifty basis points in the future. This is already okay. They are slowing down. They are not that restrictive anymore. Um, and then we're selling off again. And here you can see there an acceleration on the downside happened. So that was around half an hour after um, uh, the press conference with um, Fed Chairman Powell started. And this is when, when he said exactly what we've seen here in the headline. So US rates will peak at higher level than expected. So that was like the, the, the point once the market realized, oh, that's something we didn't expect. We expected them to slow down. That's why we bought immediately right after the release of the news. But now he's saying something like, yeah, yeah well, we are slowing down what we keep on raising, let's say, by 50 basis points for a longer than expected period, which is toxic for equities because they're hiking rates more aggressively. So that being said, delivers, let's call this an anchor. Um, so it's like an anchor at 3810. So this is the starting point of this reaction when the market realized, okay, there will be more um, 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 restrictive than initial um, 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 than, than we thought, at least at first glance. And, and from there, we saw then the market pushing lower. And in fact, here, short-term bottoming out yesterday already at 3,700 around. So this is now the level to watch on the upside. If we make it to that level and hold above that level, I could then, I would say, okay, now we, um, we work through this. So it's like Powell said it, but the market says, okay, well, probably you say, yes, we will peak at a higher level, but we don't really see you to act more restrictive 
given the most recent numbers we, we which were released, not just the um, job numbers, but also in addition to that inflation, which we get to see then uh, next week on Thursday, for example. And that being said, means if we make it above that level, then we can talk the long side, in fact. Um, but it depends a little. So it really depends on how we how we close today. So right now we are we are um, stronger. Yes, great. By the way, let me just. I just have to to uh, um, look something something up here. Um, one second, please. Oh, I'm sorry. That was that was the wrong one. Um, Okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I want to see three eight ten to be reconquered um, um, and really holding above that level, so that I say, okay, now the market priced in this restrictive um, 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 rhetoric, and from there, I then consider chances to be quite high that we make it rather sooner or later back to and above 3,900, the most recent highs you can see here. And then probably we are about to see at least the year-end rally, a retest of the region here around 4,100 4, probably, the, the 200 um, 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 SMA in this case. So um, this is probably a, a good point on the upside to aim for and that we at least close the year above 4,000 points. So I think this is a, um, um, a solid scenario, but again, we need to make it back above 3810 and hold to yeah to to to, to which which would help the, the bulls in this case and clearly send a signal well okay power was restrictive in this rhetoric but we understand that this was probably given um, the information he received during the press conference from a journalist who told him hey um mr powell markets are higher on your restrictive um um, um rate hike so probably we discounted everything already um what, what do you say? And then he was like, um, you could see this. And the, and the press conference was like, what? And then he came out with this uh, rhetoric, which kind of surprised not just me, but also other market participants, re uh, resulting then in this quite sharp drop here on the downside. So that's it on the S&P. Um, you're probably not an S&P trader. You're probably a gold trader. So you wonder what, what to make out of this, especially after given the um, recent weakness we've seen here um, in gold. And um, so the interesting thing is gold is right now strongly performing, not very surprising, to be honest. Um, so I expect this move, in fact. Unfortunately, uh, we don't get to see this scenario as of now. Let's, let's see. So looking a bit extended now on the upside, probably we're rolling over between 670, 680, and then see the pull in against here, this, this region. But as you can see already, we sold off sharply. On, um, on this candle. So this is the, the FOMC here. We sold off sharply, we retested the yearly lows, but we didn't break through. So it looks more and more like now there's a bottom, a clear bottom forming, and we are probably about to break this downtrend here rather sooner or later on the upside. Um, I want to position and anticipate such a break higher because I could imagine if we break this trend line, then there will a very quick, follow through up to 170.30. And um, we are also entering a quite bullish seasonal window now for gold, in fact. So from mid-December, so still one and a half month ago, but still, and to, to, to keep this in mind, so gold is in a very, um, um, very solid spot here for, uh, for, for, for the upside, potentially. Um, and so given that, as you can see here in the game plan, um, I'm saying, okay, I, I want to be long against 655, 660. Then I have 680 as a first target and then a break higher from there. So, which means like um, uh, we could we could build several trades. Um, so some of you might probably say, well, I'm not such a long-term trader and one month holding period is potentially high uh, or, or long, let's say. Um, but I, I, I'd like to play momentum, for example, which means... Um, let me just probably draw this in here. Pull in against this level and then momentum drive up too. So this is the 655 area around. And um, 
you probably wonder against which level we are risking here. So in fact, you're not buying just against that level, but but you wait for um, um, gold to hold that level. And once we start to see a turnaround, um, I probably go down to a five minute chart and then trade it long from there. Um, so with a stop quite tight below the most recent low, once we have this turning point and the um, a downtrend, which we will get to see forming on a lower time frame, is then broken to the upside. Um, so I'm not really sure where, where the stop will be, but it will be around 650, probably 648, something like that. And then you go here um, for a test of 75 to 80 on the upside. Um, and um, delivering us a quite interesting risk reward already. Uh, but again, this is just a very short-term trade. So you're probably um, saying, okay, I am building a position against that level here. Let's say, let's say two lots, just to throw in a number. So you have two lots here. And then um, you say, well, you know what? I'm taking out 50% here against a 680. I consider this to be my, let's say, momentum lot or whatever, um, 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 how, you, how, you, how you call this trade. And then I keep one lot for a potential break here above this trend line. So above this, this, this um, um, purple trend line in this case, which corresponds here with this downtrend uh, line on the daily chart and gives us further room on the upside, uh, at least up to 730, probably even higher than that, probably 1800, depending a little on um, how much momentum we gain now and how weak, let's call it, um, the US dollar will get based on this price out of market participants who expect the Fed to hike. Let's come back here to the Fed watch tool to hike, in fact, um, um, up to 525, 550 till mid um, of, of 2023. So which seems unlikely given the overall economic um, outlook and especially unlikely. And now we have the inflation. It's not just um, that they that they have to focus on the economy here and not to 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 kill the economy, let's say. But in addition to that, if there is no real further acceleration in inflation on the upside, but you see a peak out, which seems not that unlikely, given, for example, the latest numbers from the ISM manufacturing, for example, you will see that paid prices. Um, let's come back here to the United States. This is great, by the way, um, from, from, from trading economics and why I recommend having this, this um, um, here. It's First of all, it's for free. And second, you have all data sets um, directly available. And there we have the ISM manufacturing PMI. Um, as you can see here, paid prices, uh, which are directly correlated to inflation, given an indication of where inflation is, you can see if you, um, if you, if you go to IM prices, you can see a clear top out for the last six months around, a clear deceleration of inflation, in fact, taking place here. Paid prices dropping quite aggressively in the manufacturing sector. That being said, if inflation comes down more than previously expected, it rose sharper than expected, but it can also come quite aggressively down more than expected. Well, the room um, here for further restrictive monetary policy approach really um, is is, is, is um, how can I say that? Um, it's, the room is tightening, can I say that? So it's, uh, there's no further need, let's put it that way probably, um, to, to be more restrictive than necessary. And that being said, means the US dollar who gained tremendously over the last months could then see um, um, some sharper declines and a sharper corrective move. And we know gold is negatively correlated to the US dollar, which then increases the chance of the dynamic breakthrough here in gold and further gains, especially if we make it above 1,730 here, the, the region around the uh, September highs, respectively, these are the October highs, in fact. Um, October highs, not the September highs, also the September highs, okay, whatever. So here, this level that we get to see a sharper breakthrough. And by the way, when talking about the US dollar, right now, I love to talk about dollar JPY, given the most recent FX interventions from the Bank of Japan. Um, very interesting right now, and probably we, we already see, saw the break lower. So dollar JPY, yes, there we go. Um, so 146.90, as you can see here in the game plan, um, I say, well, we short a break below that level because then there is a clear change in character after the interventions took place. Um, so there's not just the intervention which took place around two weeks ago um, and then once again on Monday, um, but there was also one which took place already here that was in um, 
September, at the end of September. And it was a very interesting um, um, overall pattern, which you could see once uh, this intervention, how, how can I say that? Um, the impact of the intervention diminished uh, in its overall impactness, let's call it probably. Um, we saw a drift higher and the market buying back the intervention. That was especially true um, in September. And then we pushed up to 150 from there. Um, we could see something similar happening here over the last weeks, over the last week especially, with um, um, us pushing to um, these intervention lows, holding 145, and then drifting higher. And again, there, there was this, 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 this flush out immediately after the Fed released its statement and the rate decision. And with the comments from Powell, US dollar gained again, and we pushed back higher. And now the interesting thing is um, that was already quite volatile and something we haven't seen before. But right now you can see there was a clear rollover against 148 here. And this rollover indicates that we are probably about to test these 140, um, 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 five, 145 levels again. And also we need to keep in mind that the BOJ potentially um, will again intervene now to bring down the JPY or effectively bring it up, let's say a different speaking, bring down dollar JPY, bring up the JPY, uh, bring up the JPY. Um, and that being said, probably we see a further acceleration now down um, towards 145 on the downside. But as I, I write down here, um, we need to have a quite aggressive stop management because um, as I already pointed out, recent BOJ interventions, turbulences, distortions in the JGB, um, 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 Japanese government bonds or the bond market, Japanese bond market here. So the thing is that um, we, we probably, we will probably um, um, see a quite volatile um, environment. And, and that means that I'm here for a short momentum play down to 145, but I don't want to um, give the market too much room because from a pure fundamental perspective, I don't really consider JPY to be interesting. Um, um, and not just not interesting, but I think a clear short, to be honest. Um, I think uh, the BOJ clearly showed that they completely lost control um, of the JPY, of the yield curve. And thus, you don't want to be long JPY. Once we short dollar JPY, well, we are long JPY against the US dollar. Um, so we take this for a short momentum trade on the downside for several days, probably target 145, and then I'm out here. So it's completely different than the one I, I, I formulated here with gold, which I could imagine to hold um, um, the trade, which I hold then for several months, in fact, um, because I expect a break higher, even though there's also some, some opportunity for such momentum plays in this case. And um, that's it. That's it for today. So um, I, I hope you you enjoyed this. Um, so it wasn't just on, on the pure theoretical aspects of the non-farm payrolls why they're of interest, but also how to put them um, um, in the current environment and what conclusions to draw for potential place. And um, that's all from my end, in fact. So um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. If you watch the recording now on YouTube, please feel free to... Um, to leave a, a comment in the chat box below if you have any questions, any markets, which we haven't um, focused on here. Um, if you like the video, leave a thumb up here, subscribe to the channel, I already said this, and um, then enjoy yourself over the weekend and uh, talk to you again next week. I really look forward to it. All the best, happy trading, see you, bye-bye.